Well, hi there, guys, and welcome back to another episode of On the Bank Angling. You join me today, river fishing, and I'm going to be on two different rivers in the south of the country, and I'll be trying for a variety of species chub, barbel, and roach. I'm going to be using some different methods pole fishing for the roach and ledgering with pellets for the barbel and chub. So tune in and find out how I got on on these short but productive sessions. So my summer campaign on the rivers started on the fantastic fruit fishery on the Dorset Stour. If you've never been here, it is an absolutely must visit. I've tried to come every season, at least two or three trips, and this time I came armed with just pellets, which would I'd be fishing in PVA bags. Hopefully this would tempt a chub or a barbel. Let's see how I got on. It's first of the session for me, they've been very frustrating, very, very frustrating in fact. Been in the swim for ages, loads of chub in there, like uh, all shooting around grabbing pellets and I just, they just wouldn't pick up a bait that was stationary on the bottom. I've switched to a free line pellet and I've watched one take it and I've hooked it, so that's perfect. Brilliant. It's probably about four and a half pound I'd say, something like that. Lovely fish anyway, awesome stuff down at free. Okay, guys, second fish of the session, a lot smaller on this one, probably about two and a half pound. As you can see, it's got a banded, a banded little size 12 hook in its mouth, and the band there, yeah, banded pellet. Um, I put a weight on this time because the wind is absolutely mental today, and I just felt for a little pluck in there. Yeah, it was there. Brilliant stuff. So there we go, guys. Just those few chub to show for my efforts at fruit, unfortunately. It was a really tricky day. And with the wind, it made fishing that much harder. Harder still was the fact that the chub seemed really reluctant to pick baits up off the bottom, only intercepting them as they were flowing through the swim, which could have been caused by the way I was feeding. Nonetheless, the session gave me a real buzz to get back on the rivers. So for the next session, I headed out onto my local Bristol Avon. Well, hi there guys. Welcome to another episode of On The Bank Angling. Join me uh, this evening on a really, really low and clear Bristol Avon. And uh, yeah, I'm just walking around. I've got a satchel full of pellets. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just feeding a few spots. I'm not really even planning on casting in until hour and a half before dark, something like that. On really hot, clear, really hot summer days on low, clear rivers, you're wasting your time through the day. That sun needs to just go down and then it's a different ball game. Um, so I'm just baiting up, looking to see if we can see any fish early while it's cl while I've still got the light. I'm not going to walk too far because there's no one else on the stretch. So I'm just going to work the swims um, just down from the road bridge where I've caught plenty of fish before. So I know there's fish down here um, and see what happens. Uh, tricky, always tricky on the Bristol Avon, but if we can get a barbel, that's a mega result. A chub of over four pound again, a mega result. Um, but numbers of smaller fish would also be great. So let's see how we get on. Um, I'll keep you updated as always. Probably try and get a bit of action footage as well if I see a load of fish feeding in the swim. And uh, yeah, I'll show you the little rigs and bits well, as usual. So happy days. Let's see how we get on. Well guys, this is the very simple barbel rig, um, barbel and chub rig, which you would have all seen many times before. 
got a, it's a one and a half ounce lead there, gripper style lead to hold the bottom. Probably a little bit too much for the conditions, but um, I'd rather the bait stay, stay stationary here because there's quite a lot of weed around. It's attached to a, a run ring, um, so you can change the weight easily. Buffer bead, swivel, and that's tied to an eight pound Drennan Suplex hook link. Quite a long hook link as well. And that's down to that little mesh bag there, pellet. I've got an eight mil sauce pellet on there, banded on the, on the rig. And that's it, very simple. Just gonna cast it in. There's the spot. We've got a big band of weed here, up here. And I'm just gonna cast it there. We're off the tail runoff of a weir pool. As you can see, the sun's hitting down on it. So uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna try. Let's see how we get on. Well, there we go, chaps. First fish of the day. It's a tiny little joblet, and it just shows you any fish of all size will eat these pellets. This is typical. There's going to be absolutely heaps of these in the weir pool. Um, when it gets to a bit later, though, hopefully the bigger fish will push, push these out of the way. But we'll let these have the pellets for now. Good fun. And they're giving nice positive bites, which is brilliant. There you go, chaps. Getting a bit bigger. Light's starting to go now, and the bites are happening pretty quick. I should switch to a boilie really so the bait stays out there longer but I don't mind catching these. Uh, oh, still got him. Yeah so that one's probably getting on for a pound or so I'd say. Yeah they love them pellets. Happy days. Well guys almost relentless now on these small pellets as you can see just there in its mouth. Beautiful. Uh, yeah they're almost dragging the rod over they're so keen to have them so Hopefully, if there's any barbel in the area, they feel the same in about half an hour to an hour. So we'll just keep plugging away, pulling these out. They're good fun. But yeah, hopefully something a bit bigger turns up. Oh guys, now the light's going, I might be able to show you a little bit more of the swim. There you go, a little tiny little knot then. I've only just cast back out. Um, but basically you've got a weir pool or a, sort of a rapid here, really fast oxygenated water runs off you've got a tail run off here as you can see from the bubbles little back eddy there and a little back eddy here as well and then this run just goes through here it's actually very very slow there at the moment not the kind of place you would think to fish for barbel but i've caught them here in the past and i've seen them here in the past so i know they hang around there um you've got a big weed bed here um full of lilies and all sorts and then it gets very 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 shallow as it goes around the corner down here I have actually caught them from right down, right down there as well. Um, but yeah, there's not many, so you're always up against it when you're trying. Um, but yeah, this is just just where I'm fishing. I mean, I would I would try in the weir pool or, or the mill. It's not a mill pool. There's sort of uh, rapids up here. But um, to be honest with you, I've caught most of my fish right down here at the back of it. There's not quite as much water pushing through here as I would like. Um, but the chub is sat there and if the chub is sat there then the barbel will probably be happy to sit there as well. So, right, there we go. It's a nice uh, sun setting over the sunflower field there. It's all very nice down here at the moment. But yeah, barbel are hard to come by on the Aiden so we may not get one but it's all good fun anyway. Well guys, as you can tell by me uh, sat here, we're losing the light and we're losing the light quickly. And then this is barbel bite time on, on the rivers. Um, no matter what river you're on, this is barbel bite time. The next hour and a half or so um, is when they really come out to feed. Um, incidentally, the light has been off the water on the spot that I'm fishing for quite a long time now. And the bites, if anything, have tailed off. They've, uh, the chub activities died down not getting any line bites or anything like that so in this instance I'm half tempted to move obviously I baited four spots along the river two of them we didn't see any fish in so I doubt I would try those um, tonight anyway um, so it might be back to my old favorite by the bridge and I didn't actually see many big chub there which are which are usually there um, so it's one of those really you can if this was somewhere like the Y, Froop, um, the Hampshire Raven, something like that, 
and you were pretty confident there were you picked a good swim that looks good for Barbell, I'd just say just wait it just wait it out. Um, but on rivers like this, where the stocks are, there could be I don't know a dozen Barbell in the whole stretch. Um, you're better off if you don't think it feels right. You're better off moving somewhere else. And yeah, like I say, I have caught Barbell in this spot before, but it's usually happened by now. So yeah, I might move back to the bridge and uh, see what we can do up there. So we're losing the light quite quick. This might be the last you hear of me. Um, but yeah, we'll go up there. We'll see if we can catch a fish. If we can, I'll show it to you. If not, it's just another quick session on the river out of the way. So cheers, guys. Well, despite waiting till well after dark, I didn't actually get that magic barbell wrap round I was hoping for. Absolutely brilliant again though to be out on the rivers and just watching that tip is absolutely electric as the sun goes down, a moment not many people get to see with today's busy world. Well a couple weeks later I was back on the Bristol Haven again, this time with a very different target in mind. The Bristol Haven is an absolutely fantastic roach river as I found out last season when I caught fish to nearly two pounds. This time I'll be back armed once again with hemp and I'll be looking to fish it on the pole. Hemp is an absolutely deadly roach bait, it is so selective. You'll find when you're feeding a swim with maggots or anything like that, you catch a bit of all sorts and the roach generally aren't that keen on competing with other species. When you feed hemp however, it tends to only select roach, it's quite incredible how you will Put a bit of hemp in and you can almost guarantee that the next bite will be from a roach. So if you want to catch a roach on a river, put a bit of hemp on. If you're struggling to hook hemp, try tears. But I find if you're selective with what grains you pick up and you're careful with hooking them on, hemp is absolutely perfect. And uh, yeah, what a cheap and easy way to fish too. Certainly the most efficient way to fish for roach on the rivers is with the pole. As long as the flow allows you, there is no better presentation than that, that a pole offers. So uh, if you can, invest in a cheap pole and you won't regret it. You'll certainly catch a lot more roach. I tend to use the lightest flow I can get away with in the conditions. And uh, again, that helps sensitivity something that's vital when you're hemp fishing because you will get a lot of little dibs and lifts from the roach and you need to be striking at these at the right time to set the hook. And there we go, a lovely bag of river silvers. It isn't just a small fish method though. Well guys, come to the end of a session's hemp fishing. And uh, yeah, probably had about 20 pound of fish, including these absolutely lovely roach. Look at these, absolutely pristine. The top one's 114, the bottom one's 14. Absolutely lovely fish. Look at that, look at that fish. Absolutely gorgeous. They are absolutely magical, aren't they roach? Beautiful fish. Awesome stuff. And there we go guys, and what a blinding pair of roach these were. Certainly my fish of the season to date. I'm looking forward to what the rest of the season has to offer, and if you're getting out on the bank, I wish you all the best. Tight lines. <laughs>